everybody, and welcome back to Only Stupid Answers. This is the show where we answer your questions about movies, TV shows, comic books, James Gunn's and Witchers. I'm excited to talk about this news with Roxy. Um, uh, I'm here, DJ. That's me. With me, as always, is Roxy. Hi, Roxy. That's me, as always. With me is DJ. Hi, DJ. Hi, I'm DJ. With me, no, uh, we're talking about uh, James Gunn taking over um, uh, uh, DC Studios with Peter Safran. Uh, did I get his name right? I did. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that will be fun. We've also got some news. We're going to be talking about Henry Cavill leaving The Wisher. But for some reason, the show is still going on, which is a decision. It is it is a decision. Uh, but we're going to be getting into that in a minute. First up, listen, if you want to watch this show live with special stuff that I cut out, uh, you can do that over at patreon.com slash only stupid answers. We also have exclusive shows like What We're Into and Spider Versity, where Sal and I talk about everything Spider Man. We just cover the Morbius movies. And then what we're into, Roxy and I talk about the stuff we can't fit into the main show, including the premiere of Titan season four. I watched it and I have thoughts. Uh, you can give us five stars on iTunes, please, and thank you. And on Spotify, every week we ask you a question. Last week's question was uh, What is the scariest superhero movie? And Xavier Thomas said, Hellboy 2, The Golden Army, definitely had some of the creepiest monsters ever on screen. Anyone remember Troll Alley with all those gross creatures? But the Angel of Death has to be the scariest. And I think that is a good choice. Who did we say? I don't think. Uh, this was actually. Uh, oh, that Spider-Versity. Yeah, it was a Spider-Versity uh, feeling. Who did you say? We took a break. Uh, what 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 would I say is the scariest superhero movie? Hellboy two. No scariest villain, right? No, just the scariest superhero <laughs> movie. Oh. And I think the scariest superhero movie would probably fan, be Fan Four Stick <laughs> because uh, it is answer it's, real. It's DJ. overall quality, but also if you recall when they get their powers, they really went hard into the body horror aspect of it. And it didn't look great to be a, a Fantastic Four member, which I would argue is not the direction I would take that franchise. But it, it, that scene was effective. What about you, Roxy? Scariest superhero movie? I think it would be Unbreakable. Ooh, good choice. Good choice. Right? Yeah. Or like, because that counts, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, it does count. It does count. Um, do you think that Doctor Strange 2 thinks it's the scariest superhero movie? No. No, I think it's uh, it, it uses, it evokes horror tropes, but I don't think it ever, like I, I saw some people was coming out like, it's a horror movie. It's not. And I don't think, I Sam Raimi's a pro. I think he is also aware that it is not a horror movie. He just knows how to do, it has stuff that like quotes slasher movies and other stuff like that, but it's not trying to, you know, it has, it has, um, would I argue that it has some of the scariest superhero movie moments? It is weird because superhero genre is not a genre designed to be uh, scary. Um, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm definitely missing something. Like there's something in the back of my brain, like a superhero movie. That's just a fun superhero movie, but there's a moment in it that's like genuinely like, Oh, that's actually unsettling. Um, what about, oh, you know what? Uh, uh, what about uh, Shazam? What about Shazam with the seven deadly sins when they take out like the boardroom? What about Werewolf by Night? Is it, see, Werewolf by Night, I, th I would I would slot in with um, uh, with Doctor Strange: Multiverse of Madness, where it's more of like uh, horror vibes, but like fun. Like it's not. We're not. I don't think anything in Werewolf by Night is actually scary or even intended to be scary. It's just kind of fun. It's got fun, spooky vibes. I think that we found a, a wee bit of a hole in the genre. Yeah, the, you mean uh, opportunity, something that future movies could exploit. Yeah, I think New Mutants. <laughs> that is what I mean, DJ. Yes, I think New Mutants wanted to do that. I think we could argue the efficacy of that. I think it did some things well. I don't know that the horror aspect was one of them. I liked that movie. Yes, but did did you find it scary? No, no, I wasn't even responding to what you just said. I oh, just okay. feel like New Mutants got ripped to shreds to the extent where I don't even know anymore like what people consider to be good versus horrible because such a thin line sometimes and like the way that people shit on that movie was like, it was fine. 
Yeah, it's. I'm going to be honest with you because this com- this conversation comes from uh, last week. We put up the first episode of our Morbius discussion. Me and Sal. Uh, if you want part two of that, that's over Patreon.com/slash Only Stupid Answers. Um, people shit on Morbius so hard, and in my opinion, Morbius is not worse than any of the Venom movies. It is it is of the same quality of the Venom movies, which people will come to the defense of as fun. And it's like, yeah, I, yeah, they're all they're all kind of dumb fun. I don't know that like more. I would argue Jurassic. I had a worse time at Jurassic World Dominion than I did at Morbius. <laughs> I thought Morbius was fun enough. Yeah, it's not good. I'm not arguing. See, it sounds like I'm arguing for Morbius. That is not what I'm doing. But what I'm saying is I have seen worse movies this year. <laughs> I feel you on yeah. that. Let's go into some news. Oh, my goodness. So, Roxy, basically, we're playing catch up here. We had a week off, and a lot of things happened in the previous week. One of those things was the news that Henry Cavill is leaving The Witcher and instead of just saying, well, I guess our our show's over now, <laughs> they said, hmm, you know who the perfect replacement for Henry Cavill would be is Liam Hemsworth. And it's like, what? Why? What? Not even against Liam Hemsworth. I just don't. Ugh. Why? Did you have somebody in mind you thought would have been better? Like, are you are you more weirded out by the fact that Henry Cavill's leaving or more weirded out by the fact that Liam Hemsworth is the replacement? I'm more weirded out that they didn't just say, oh, the lead and one would argue the main draw of our show is leaving. I guess our show's over now. I think is I think it's like, I guess we're just done with this show as opposed to like, like, does anybody, is anybody excited about Liam? Does anybody hear Liam Hemsworth's name and get excited when they hear it? You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I do think it's interesting the fact that we did hear this year that Liam Hemsworth was initially auditioning for Thor when mm-hmm. Chris got the role yes. and that Liam was very close to getting it. Obviously, also his big franchise being The Hunger Games. Sure. I, I think that there is a lot of Liam left to be loved. Mm-hmm. Like There's a lot of Liam on the table. Yeah. <laughs> and But people Take do, him or Liam. But did you just make that up right now? Yes. It's so good, DJ. I felt like you were coming. I feel like you were you were just right on the edge of a pun. I felt like it was right there, so I had to jump on it. You should tweet that out. All right. You should I will. say I'll save in it. terms in terms of the Witcher, I could take him or leave him. I could take him or Liam. I could take the or Liam. Witcher recasting, take him or Liam. You should pause the whole show. Okay, hold on, everybody. Uh, stay tuned. Hold on. We gotta tweet this out. Um, okay, so I think that what is weird, though, is that Liam seemingly is getting a response as if he was like Army Hammer. Okay. Like, just in terms of like, I feel like people are dunking on him. Mm-hmm. And it's like, he didn't do anything. Like, yes. He, he's just like a dude taking a role. And like, he, I don't know. It is the Henry Cavill part, people being upset that he's leaving. I feel for. Yeah. The people being upset that Liam is the replacement, I'm like, wait, who did you guys want if it wasn't Henry? Oh, or again, I th- I, could be? yeah. I do. Again, I think the answer is you don't you do you don't do your show anymore. Like it's like that's your guy. That's the that's the main. It'd be like if Stephen Amell was like, I'm not doing Arrow anymore, and they're like, well, I guess we're recasting all of her Queen and Arrow, and it's like, well, don't do that. That's your main dude. Like, what are you doing? Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, by the way, I've been seeing some Stephen Amell news in the news, and he doesn't seem like that good a dude. Anyway, <laughs> moving on from that, um, I do think if I was thinking like vibe wise and maybe uh, star power wise, the only person that came to mind that I think would be a l- the closest to a lateral move would be Alexander Skarsgård from Northmen. From, yeah, I love him. Yeah, and he's got that similar, like, if you've seen The Northman, he's got similar, like, broody muscle guy vibes. That's just not the vibe I've ever gotten from Liam Hemsworth. And listen, like you said, there's a lot of Liam on the table. Maybe he'll blow us blow us away. But I do think one of the big, big draws of The Witcher is Henry Cavill in The Witcher. And I don't know. I mean, a lot of the other cast is strong. If you wanted to do a spinoff without The Witcher or maybe a Witcher season four with a different Witcher. I think that show wouldn't do very well, but I'm not sure Liam Hemsworth as Geralt would, is going yeah. to do well. <laughs> okay. There, are, I know there are more options than this, but I just want to play a couple hypotheticals with you. Do okay. It. And, and just for the clarification of the uh, people at home and myself, you 
are caught up on The Witcher, yes, you will be watching Witcher season three with yes, Henry Cavill. I will. Okay. So, and, and I would even argue that I enjoy The Witcher. Okay, very good. Yeah. Very good, DJ. Mm -hmm. um, so my my hypotheticals to you are, or would you rather to you? I guess. Yeah. Would you rather Man of Steel two wait? four or five years mm -hmm. to start filming and get Henry Cavill to finish out the Witcher and, and have man of steel be pushed. Or would you rather Henry Cavill be traded, replaced by Liam and get man of steel two in two years. Again, this is hypothetical. Cause I know you said you would rather them end the Witcher, but I'm just saying of those two options, what would you rather? If you'd ask me this pre end of Black Adam, spoilers for Black Adam, I would have been like, well, no, just have him keep being the Witcher. I don't need Henry Cavill to come back as Superman. And then th just that brief moment at the end of Black Adam, again, with like the genuine warmth and stuff, is like, okay, maybe I'm in. Maybe I'm in. Um, I, uh, <laughs> Uh, I guess I guess maybe have him do Man of Steel. If that's where his heart is, have him do Man of Steel and and whatever they do with The Witcher, and I'll just stop watching The Witcher. Um, question for you, Roxy. Did that adequately answer your question? Yeah, it did. Okay. But I also think that you shouldn't stop watching The Witcher. Well, we'll see. We'll give Liam a chance. I just, you know, hopes aren't high. Um, uh, How do you know if you're going to take him or Liam? I don't know. I, listen, yeah. I'll check it out. Listen, I... You don't take Liam first. You got to take chances. I was. I felt pretty burnt out after Obi-Wan. I wasn't going to give Andor a chance. I did. And boy, am I happy I did. Uh, so you got to give things a chance. Uh, question for you, Roxy. And I've heard... Yes, because DJ. Uh, obviously, the inter internet immediate speculation was, oh, I guess Man of Steel kept him from doing this. I don't know that that tracks in my brain. It's not like... It's been like two years since the previous season of the witcher or however long time's weird right now the point is i think henry cavill could fit in man of steels in between the witchers so i'm not sure it's a one-to-one -one man of steel two's happening so witcher's not happening you're talking about from a scheduling point of view yes. i'm talking about from a contractual point of view Ooh, elaborate i feel as if warner brothers was like nah no, nah, Witcher, why? I think they were like, we want you for Poppins. We're based, like, this is, uh, you are now the center. Okay. I feel like the fact that Saffron and Gunn are announced, mm -hmm. then this happens. Yeah. Clearly means some, to me, yeah. plans for Henry Cavill in the WB. We want you. You are our Superman. We don't want you simultaneously having to film The Witcher, leaving to film The Witcher, doing press for The Witcher, being on TV in general. Like we yeah. want you exclusively okay. to be Superman okay. for the next five years. Okay, so you you think it is Superman is the reason he's no longer The Witcher? I do. I don't know that Man of Steel is the reason, but yeah. I think Superman. Superman I in feel general. Like yeah, I do think we are opening up a era of Superman door right now. Okay. If, okay. if for some reason, Leaving Witcher has literally zero to do with Superman, I think people are going to be pissed. <laughs> well, it's it's the thing. I, I Yeah, I guess so. And I've also heard people, because these rumors were going around, circling around, and I've also heard people suggest this, although I think this is less likely. There were rumors circulating he might be in House of the Dragon season two. And so that would. Why would he him. leave Witcher to be in House of the Dragon? Great question. Great question. Also, I'm just going to say, and I don't know that this would be true if he is in the next season of House of the Dragon. I think that he's one of our younger characters aged up. And I would kind of, I wouldn't mind if we like paused on the, on the, uh, pump the brakes on the time skips on that show. I loved season one of House of the Dragon. We'll talk about it, what we're into. But you know what I mean? I think we, I feel like we can live. In this era, a little bit longer that that where totally. the show ended. <laughs> totally. Also, I think that it would be very, very weird to have uh, like distracting to have Henry Cavill in that show. 
That doesn't yeah. seem to be the way of that show. Yes, good. Yes, good point. I listen. I am excited for him to come back as Superman. I'm excited about what you floated about them utilizing Superman more again, especially if again he gets to actually act like Superman. And I will say, my goodwill towards him as Superman, I've I've got more goodwill towards him as Superman because of stuff like The Witcher and his appearance in the Mission Impossible movies. Yeah. I'm with you, DJ. It's so bizarre. I think if you... Man of Steel came out in 2014. Oh, wait. I have it right here. It came out in 2013. 2013. Okay. Yeah. So Man of Steel came out in 2013. We started DC Movie News in 2014, um, which meant that we didn't have a DC movie come out for three years while doing the show, <laughs> which was wild. Yes. Uh, that's, that is less than a decade ago in which there were oftentimes years where you wouldn't have a movie for an entire property, which yeah. is bizarre. But anyway, uh, and I think if you go back to those videos, I remember of the four of us on the panel being like, so Henry Cavill doesn't move the needle for me. Yeah, His Superman is just not moving the needle for me. I don't think it's horrific, but like he's not doing for me what I- I'm not clamoring for a Man of Steel too. Yeah. Somehow, some way, <laughs> since 2013, so in the last nine years, I'm singing a different tune. Yeah. Like I at that point I was saying he it's just meh, whatever. And somehow between the um release of the Snyder cut, mm-hmm. between the uh Mission Impossible movie, and I only saw season one of The Witcher, yeah. but season one of The Witcher, him consistently not shit talking DC and yeah. every time being like beautiful about it and saying the capes in my closet would love to don it again like just who he's kind of been in the media between all of those things i am clamoring for a man of steel too yeah and i think that's really strange that you would think with more time i would be less likely to be like man of steel too because it's been so much time and so many other movies have come out but after all these years not only do I finally want a Man of Steel 2, I really want a Man of Steel 2. So that's bizarre. It kind of reminds me of um, almost Andrew Garfield in a way, where it's like, hey, you know all your valid criticisms of those movies? Yeah, I wasn't the problem. You know what I mean? And so oh, after seeing Henry Cavill and these other things, and like we are talking about the press, and like the more we learn that like, oh no, he's a genuine nerd. Uh, it's like, yeah, give him another shot. Let's do it. Let's do this thing. We're all excited for it. Um, totally. And it does tie into our conversation later. But real quick, we got some um, big casting this week for Agatha, uh, Coven of Chaos. But I also wanted to mention casting that came out last week that I forgot to put my notes. Um, we got Aubrey Plaza is cast as somebody in Coven of Chaos, which feels like, yeah, slam dunk. What are, yeah, of course. Um, but also, also big week for Aubrey Plaza. She's in this season of White Lotus. We'll talk about that and what we're into. Also, yeah. last week, Yaya Abdul-Mateen II is going to be our Wonder Man. He's jumping ship, not necessarily jumping ship, but he's he's going from DC to Marvel. Thoughts, That's Roxy. true. <laughs> yeah, uh, I love Yaya Abdul-Mateen II, and um, in a more basic way, I love to look at him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's also very talented, and I saw this and was like, that's fine by me, and then I saw the internet being like, this doesn't make sense. He's weirder, dorkier, nerdy, whatever. That doesn't make sense for the character. And I was like, I don't care what you guys say. Any time that we cast him, I'm into it. Yeah, because here's the thing. Wonder Man's one of those characters that, like, you could... I am of the opinion, and I know people on the internet would agree, disagree with me. You can kind of do whatever the fuck you want to, because it's not like... Even, even characters like... Moon Knight and She-Hulk have had several long-running, ongoing series where they are the lead. That is not the case of Wonder Man. Like, Wonder Man, he's been around, whatever. I'm of the opinion that you can do whatever the fuck with Wonder Man. Yeah, who who cares? Exactly. On on the base level, no matter what, it's a comic character. Who cares? But if you wanted to even get into a purist brain mindset, it's Wonder Man. Who cares? Like, it's... And the, the... only thing that I know sticks in my brain with Wonder Man, and forgive me if I'm off base, I'm sorry, I'm not super Wonder Man literate. Um, he is he was an actor. The character was an actor before he became a superhero. So you need to cast somebody that's uh super actor, handsome. Guess what you did? Uh good job. And also he's got like 
ionic powers, which actually kind of makes him line up a little bit with Dr. Manhattan. So nailed it twice, in my opinion. But um, What's ionic? Ionic is, I, 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 there's probably a real term. It's it's like a, a quantum in, in comics. It's whatever the fuck you want it to mean. It's, it's magic energy powers. And it, th- to the point, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, I think there's points in the comic where, like Dr. Manhattan, he doesn't really have a true corporeal form. Like, his body that we see is something he's made from energy to exist in the world. So again, okay, but not a shapeshifter, not a shapeshifter that I'm aware of. He just can become energy basically. Um, and so again, two for two, I think you nailed it also as Roxy, as you were mentioning, incredibly talented. So now I, you did, I, it's incredibly smart casting because now all of a sudden I care about wonder man and I didn't before. So yeah, yeah. That's, I, I just wonder how many people who are upset about this casting are actually upset about this cast. 100% kind of like the people upset with she hook. Yes, I agree. I think yeah. you might be on to something there. And I could be wrong. There could be some big stands out there who are like, not my wonder man, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> But again, even then, that feels disingenuous because have you seen his other performances? Did you see him in Watchmen? Did you see him in uh, Aquaman? Like the? Uh, did you see him in Candyman? Incredibly talented, very talented yeah, he's, actor. He's really good. He's really good. I'm I'm hoping for um, big blue dong in this. <laughs> you might. I I would hold my breath on Disney Plus for that one in particular. But uh, you know. Uh, oh, <laughs> Springs Eternal. What about for for Aubrey Plaza? Are you hoping for some big blue dong for Aubrey Plaza? Yeah, I am. I am. I think she would fucking love that. Yes. Uh, a show that you and I t- used to talk about back in the day, Legion. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel like that really made me be like, "Ooh, this girl can act." You yeah. know, I loved Parks and Rec. Um, I feel like that and actually interesting to think about what all of them are doing on that show like severance being my favorite show adam yeah. scott being there yep. uh there's a lot of them have done massive things um chris Prattgate, all the things yeah. but <laughs> i think that she is she is like phenomenally quirky yeah in a way that she brings so much energy to each character she's just it's one of those people you can watch watch paint dry like mm-hmm. she just has got it so i am really excited for her in anything you know that this is a show that I'm not super clear on why we're doing it. Same. And so it's like, on the one hand, they've gotten me excited because I really like people involved with the show. Yeah. On the other hand, I don't have any fucking understanding of why the show exists. And somehow WandaVision managed to be a lot of people's favorite MCU show mm-hmm. when for me, I, they took my favorite character yeah. and made me not love a show. Mm-hmm. So my faith in this show, what is it? Agatha explains it all. Yeah. Now Agatha, <laughs> Ag- oh. what was it? Agatha is responsible After for all, everything. It was, Ag- Oh, it was Agatha all along. Got all it. Along. We got it. We got it. We got it. I'm like, okay. A little nervous. Yeah. I do wonder if maybe this show is a gate because why are we doing this because marvel hasn't been shy about like not doing things like like oh we don't actually we don't need to do this you know and pivoting like like uh the armor wars is going from a show to a movie right right um so clearly there's a reason to be doing this and i wonder if the reason is maybe this is our way of reintegrating wanda back in i have a theory that one of if you look at the timeline they posted i know she'll have to shift it around there's a few projects in between Kang Dynasty, Avengers Kang Dynasty, and Avengers Secret Wars. And I'm thinking about all the, you know, the multiverse stuff. Like, we might get multiple Spider-Mans, Captain America's, Iron Man's in Secret Wars. There's a lot going on. It's not, like, one of the things I thought Endgame did that was really smart was pull everything back to our core base Avengers team, basically. I don't know that you can do that with Secret Wars. So I think some of those projects in between might... And you think that our core is just, like, 25 people at the core? I mean, but it, it, are, are you talking about for Secret Wars? No, you said Endgame. Endgame, well, but Endgame brought it back. Everybody vanished, so Endgame was Iron Man, Captain America, Hulk, Black Widow for a bulk of the movie. That was it. Was our core Avengers team, give or take a War Machine and a Nebula? I don't think. Um, give or take. Yeah. Take, take them or take them. Or, to take them or Liam. Take or Liam. Um, and I don't think you can do that with Secret <laughs> Wars. So I'm thinking a couple of those projects in between Kang Dynasty and uh, Secret Wars will be. 
like direct tie-ins, like like not not just you know a post credit scene in Ant Man that tells you where Ant Man is before Endgame, like full on tie-ins, and I think that's where we get. There's a there's a comic called Young Avengers, Children's Crusade where the Young Avengers are trying to find Wanda, and I think I think Wanda. I, I my point is long story short, I think w- Wanda coming back is a key component of either Kang Dynasty or Secret Wars. And I wouldn't be surprised if something like uh, Coven of Chaos is laying the groundwork for that. Okay. So does that make you more excited then? Uh, not necessarily that. Aubrey Plaza being in it does. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah. like, okay, yeah, I mean, yes. Seeing her play off Catherine Hahn, yeah, I'm in. Yeah, I feel you. And and I still love Catherine Hahn. Yes. Yes. And Agatha really was explaining it all. She did. Agatha explained it all, and that's why everything in that show made perfect sense. Did no you, notes. Did you ever watch Clarissa explain it all? Of course I did, Roxy. Okay, so of the way I that I just keep combining those in my mind is really unfortunate. And that, sh- but that show, I would watch that show if it was Agatha yeah. in a Clarissa role, just explaining life lessons. I'd watch that show, Roxy. I'd watch it. Uh, you're not wrong that it would be spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> And listen, maybe we'll get some of our other horror boys in there. Maybe Werewolf by Night will pop in. Maybe we're going to lay the groundworks for Supernatural team. I just feel like there's a reason that show is still on the docket, despite it seeming like why. <laughs> well, that would be the perfect thing for it if they really wanted to do like an Agatha thing. Don't you think they could have just made it a special for next December like they did with... Yes, uh, now that you say that out loud, yes, 100%. They should have. <laughs> yeah, like, that would have been great. I would have actually been excited for that. Yes, like agreed. If they were like, coming next December, mm-hmm. I get all along. Yeah. I just yes. explained it all. <laughs> actually, 100%. Now that you said like, it. Oh, what a great Halloween spooky special. And she's so witchy woman so yeah. it makes like perfect sense tonally and then put aubrey plaza in that and i'd be like oh my god i can't wait for this but a whole series on it, i'm just like on what dog mm-hmm. on what? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yes i feel you all right now we're gonna go we're gonna transition to talking about james gunn taking over dc but first another ad god damn it all right we are back and of course the biggest news that dropped last week that i had to talk about with roxy was James Gunn and Peter Safran were announced as the new they they together combined like Voltron are the Kevin Feige for 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 DC Studios that's what it's being called now and right off the bat and just DCU now did they I I heard them talking about is that like a confirmed thing yeah so it's DC Studios is what they're co-chairs of and they are running the DCU got it and I think. We got a question from Leonard Kim right off the bat that kind of like lays it all out. What direction do you think the game, oh my God, the gun Saffron, that gun Saffron will take with DC Studios? Will they build towards a cinematic universe or create a standalone projects? Just movies or combo movies and shows, separate universes existing at once or whatever the Batman universe is. uh, So basically separate universes. Roxy, this is a week old news. But you need to tell us what you think, how they're going to lead this whole thing. Well, honestly, I have been thinking about it for a week about like what do I even want them to do? Yes. Um, And I think that's how I kind of like to divide this is what do we think they what do we want and what do they what do we think they will do? I think that there's a lot of wild cards that is preventing them right now from even saying what they're going to do. Yes. One of those big wild cards, of course, being. The Flash. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, you know, currently Ezra Miller is facing up to 26 years in prison. That is a substantial amount of time. That is, I bet they will not take a single step into prison, but the fact that they are even facing that amount of time is yeah, probably. No, I, I definitely don't think that they're going to see any prison cell yeah. anytime soon, but I do think that. Uh, Gun and Saffron would be kind of moronic to like be like full speed ahead with Ezra. That's all aboard, choo choo. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think that they're just like not touching that with a ten foot pole at this moment, which it plays to the. And I'm not specifically talking about the Flash, the movie. I'm talking about the Flash, the character. Yeah, meaning like that's a big part of what I'm sure a nerd like Gun wants to do is something to do with the justice league you know i think in anybody's dream of dream worlds 
that is running DC, what they do is they put the Justice League together right. Yeah. They figure out the Man of Steel situation. They either bring back Batfleck or they have a solid Batman. Figure that out. Put that in place. Uh, Aquaman blows us out of the water and the Amber Heard stuff is not an issue for people. And the Aquaman annihilates Wonder Woman um, just is like the third one is doesn't get that mixed review that the second one does and does not make comments on the Middle East <laughs> that it's biting off more than it can chew. And um, they talk to Ray Fisher and Ray Fisher's like, love you guys back in Cyborg in the house. And that's in a dream of dream world. I'm sure that's something that they're considering. Yeah. Like, can we start doing solos for all of these people um, slowly bring in Shazam and Black Adam, despite The Rock saying that he doesn't want to fight against Shazam. Yeah, Did you see and that consider- yeah, and considering comments Zachary Levi has made, I'm not. I don't really care. It's oh, just, I missed it. What happened? He's he was talked about how great he thinks Jordan Peterson is, and that that's a that's a mm, that's tough. Mm, that's mm, tough. Mm. It's not the worst. Listen, it's not the worst thing we've heard celebrities say, even this week. But I just not not a fan of it. <laughs> It's a bummer, too, because you never know when a celebrity hears one speech of somebody's or like yeah. one five minute clip and is like, that person's brilliant. And mm-hmm. then it's like Jordan Peterson can fool a lot of fucking people in two minutes. Yeah. Um, but if you know who Jordan Peterson is. Yes. And you love him. Yeah. You're a crazy person. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, though, I I think that right now, if they are talking about what are all of our options, that yeah. has to be one avenue they are thinking about. 100%. That doesn't mean it's the avenue they should go with. Yeah. Or the avenue, av- when, especially when you're bringing in the Ray Fishers, uh, an avenue they can accomplish. <laughs> right. It doesn't mean it should be what they could go with or that they, if they even wanted to, that they could. Because yeah. I I do think that, I am curious, I haven't checked in with A over E in a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, accountability over entertainment, Ray Fishers, yeah. famous how he signs off, but his big, his biggest issue seemed to be with Hamada. Yeah. Um, and so curious what his thoughts, I mean, I don't think unless I'm misremembering that there is a Saffron gun, Ray Fisher issue. Yes. So I wonder if he would be open to that mm-hmm. or if that even would be what's best for him. Yeah. Uh, you know, so curious about that, but that would be one Avenue. Another avenue they have to be thinking about because they have four year contracts. Yeah. Which is Saffron. honestly not a lot of time. Not a lot of time mm-hmm. to be good to, to, because in that time you need to reslate, <laughs> pre pro, film, and release a movie. Yeah. You know, so it's just not that much time. So the second thing they must be thinking about is looking at their successful projects yeah. and just focusing on that for four years. So that would be the Batman. Mm hmm. And uh, I know that the reports were varying about whether Matt Reeves's properties are following or they have jurisdiction over. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, the Batman includes those 15 spinoffs we've talked about. Yes. Um, the Joker obviously d- worked well for them. Uh, could keep hitting singles with Shazam, with Black Adam, with, you know, uh, do another Harley Quinn movie or yeah. another The Suicide Squad guns there so they might be thinking about like let's just do some individual movies we know are going to work for the next four years Uh, and then the third option would be to completely blow us out of the water with something that we're not thinking of right now yeah recast start over um give us a new everybody you know round out what you've done in one movie do some kind of a justice league two situation Mm -hmm. get it in the water and then start from from scratch uh i think those would probably be three of the options that are on the table yes yeah i yes i think those are the three most solid options i do i I, we've talked about this before and like i mentioned um before we were airing for those watching live at patreon.com slash only super answers i was on a podcast with friend of the show uh hector Navarro and joel monique on their uh comic-con metapod and we talked a little bit about this and um, I know in the past I've been – because of the casting issues and all the other things, I've been kind of bullish about the idea of like 
kind of phase out, let's phase out our Jason Momoa's Aquaman and our Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman and the stuff that's working and kind of build off of the Batman into a a new shared DC universe. Um, that feels less likely now that we've definitively got Henry Cavill coming back. That's the linchpin in all of this is yeah. that Henry Cavill, that like, it's not rumors anymore. We yes. saw. Yeah. So it's like, I don't, I think it would be crazy that if they did that and that's the last time we see him and he was announced to leave the Witcher, like yeah. that would be, that, that would be, be mind blowing. Uh, egregious. Uh, some yes. might tell. But I do think the Batman does give them a gift because I do think if you were able to go to Ben Affleck and be like, listen, dude, we're not, you're not, you don't need to worry about headlining a Batman trilogy. You don't need to be, we just need you to show up in these team movies or in these small cameos and we're going to back up the money truck and you are that. And, and, and then Matt Reeves, he's been very vocal about, he just wants to do Batman stuff. He doesn't want Superman or whatever to show up. I think that's a bummer, but whatever. Um, and so Robert Pattinson gets to be their Batman movies, but Ben Affleck gets to be their Batman of the justice league movies. But then there's no Batman movie you're saying with, in- with Ben Affleck as a standalone. And I think that's your way because I, I think that's beneficial because I don't get the impression. That's what he wants. What about Michael Keaton? I think that's fucking crazy. I think he's, <laughs> he's like, hey, hey, listen, we like Michael Keaton's Batman. He's a Batman from a completely different I, era. I just mean, what do you think they're legitimately doing with him? I, I think that, Oh, what they're doing with him. I, I think the idea of having him be the Batman of that universe was crazy. And I think they're rightfully kind of phasing that out. Cause it sounds like he was going to have bits in Aquaman that they're now reshooting with Ben Affleck and whatever deal you had with Michael Keaton, I'm sure you could do with Ben Affleck. Like I, you know what I mean? It's not like Michael Keaton was going to be, doing backflips in a Batman movie. You know what I mean? Like (laughs) one, the one thing I would say though, and then this is probably still possible because of the way that you're pitching it. But Michael Keaton doesn't seem to be very interested in making his own movies. Ben Affleck Mm -hmm. seems to be very interested in producing, directing and and starring in, or just directing, you know, he seems to be very interested in being a filmmaker. Yeah. And, and you know, what would help him afford his multiple houses and cars while he does that is occasional Batman cameos. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's very true. Uh, like, so I, I, how much money he would make to be on screen for five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, whatever money they were going to pay Keaton, you know, they obviously offered him something enough to, to lure him back into the Cape and cow. It's like, I'm sure that would work for him. And so then you do, listen, man, you just need to be one of the dudes in our Justice League movie. I know Hector mentioned the idea of, you know, a few years ago, there was a, a Justice League versus Suicide Squad um, comic doing that as a movie to kind of bring everybody under one roof as kind of like, hey, here's where we're at and then spin off from there. Like basically as a, as a reset. And you can also use, uh, Flash is kind of a soft reboot. What do you think about this, Roxy? Okay. Ezra Miller had some problems with them, right? Uh, they need to go figure their stuff out. Um, what if James Gunn <laughs> was like... it mildly. <laughs> yeah, to put it as gently as possible. What if James Gunn was like, I got you, fam. Chris Pratt as Barry Allen. <laughs> I feel like they would boo him off stage. Like. Which, is, which is, I think, just a general response to where Chris Pratt is and stuff, as opposed to like, I actually, that is a role. I don't know that I like him as Mario. I think he was miscast in Jurassic world. Barry Allen actually might not be a stretch for Chris Pratt. (laughs) I don't know. He's like age wise and like type. What? I don't know. Uh, Do you think that it is possible that they phase out? They as in Peter Safran and James Gunn and DC in general, phase out Barry Allen and have Wally West be the new Flash? Um, that would be what I would do. I don't think so. I think that I, that's what I would do because I think Wally West is a more interesting character and he's the Flash that I grew up with. But I think Barry Allen's the one we put in a movie. Barry Allen's the one that headlined a show. Barry Allen's the one that we're pushing down everybody's throats. Uh, so I think it, it is more. It, it makes more sense to me Again, it's just from growing up with the comics to say to to retool it so that Barry Allen's Flash dies in the Flash movie and he is replaced with Wally West. That way you don't have to worry about even people comparing similar that we were just talking about The Witcher. Like if Liam Hemsworth was in The Witcher, cool. Liam Hemsworth being The Witcher, well now but Henry Cavill's The Witcher in my brain. 
having Wally right. West do it, I think, frees you up from that comparison. I don't so, think that's what they're going to do. I think they're going to recast Barry Allen. I'm not trying to be smart or cute right now. I genuinely don't remember. Did The Flash end this season? In next season. It's, next so season. yeah, so we get I, we get a short season nine that starts in 2020. What are we two? So 2023. Are we gonna watch it? I am. I think I did, made the decision last night that it's the last season. It's the where it's where this whole thing. It's what not where only stupid about answers. The previous season. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I don't All right, care. I'll watch it with you. Cool, cool, cool. I'm just gonna start cold, and yeah. we'll see. Listen, it might burn me out quick, but I just feel like. That's where Sam and I started doing this bullshit. Is that I know. so? It's like I got. I, I feel. Know. I feel like I owe it to the show. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know. I feel you. Yeah. I feel you. Yeah. I know. I it just. Even I though I just stopped like, at what season six or something, I'm trying to. I, help. I hung in way longer than you did. Yeah. And it's been a minute since I've been watching. Yeah. But I didn't see Superman and Lois season two. Neither did I, and I liked season one. Yeah, me too. Mm. So that's how you know. And I never saw a single episode of Star Girl. First season of Stargirl was good. I did not keep up with it. So, because you know what happened is suddenly that wasn't the only game in town for superhero shows. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. Because it's like when you want to sit down to watch, if you you can watch one superhero show a week, if you're going to sit down and watch The Flash instead of Peacemaker, I don't. Peacemaker's so good. This is. Yeah. You effortlessly roxy segued us into another part of this conversation i got you cw is not what it, it's been bought by next star or whatever the fuck who knows what's going on there um most the only the last remaining of those cw superior shows is superman and lois do you think they will do what they've been doing and say each show is kind of its own universe or Maybe we have another Berlanti verse or whatever. Or do you think they'll do with this switchover? They'll look at what Marvel's doing as like, no, every single DC thing now needs to be part of this larger superstructure. But they're already in a position where that's not the case. With Batman and Joker? Yes. Yeah. So I don't think that they, I don't think so because. Uh, they're already in a position where that's not the case and it seems like they're going deeper into that position yeah i and i think that would be good because something i liked about i i kind of liked the where we were we're like hey we're just gonna do what works you like aquaman cool aquaman has two lines that reference justice league who, who cares and we just move on like just don't don't get so hung up on uh, what the MCU is doing, but because of the MCU success, I have a, I feel like they'll look at like, no, every show now needs to be a spinoff of either the Batman or the Suicide Squad. Like it need, it can't be just like, like I can't imagine. We'll talk about what we're into, uh, Titan season four, and we're getting a Doom Patrol season four. Knock on wood. I mean, they're filming it. Who's uh, it, um, until I, it's in my eyeballs. I'm not going to believe it's happening. Um, but I can't imagine them getting a season five. You know what I mean? Let me ask you a question. Yeah. This is crazy town USA. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think if there is not a Man of Steel 2, mm-hmm. if the reason Henry was pulled from The Witcher is because there is going to be a Superman TV show? Um, I, I agree with you. That's crazy town, and I don't think that would happen. <laughs> I'd be down for it, though. I like honestly it was like th- an eight episode best show you've ever seen in your life show. Yeah, I'd watch it. I, let's That'd be get crazy. let's get Tony Gilroy from Andor. Hey man, what do we need to pay you to come over here and write our Superman show? Um, Dude, you're loving that show so much, and so is everybody. So uh, good, Roxy. It's so good. Um, but yeah, I I think that would be incredible. Sorry, Tyler Hecklin, you're great. Sorry, because that would that would one hundred percent mean that show is going away. If they're doing a Henry Cavill show, sorry, Superman and Lois, you're done for. Um, Amy Adams did HBO shows. It's not out of the realm of possibility that you could get those two to do a show together. Um, I don't know. I I think I think where we're at is we're. I think they're gonna. You're hiring James Gunn and Peter Safran to make the DCU that we have work. And I think there's merit in that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 
Uh, last thing, and I did not see this from the original comments, and so thank you, Danny, for posing this in the Discord. How does Zaslav not know when the last Superman movie was made? I didn't understand what that question meant, and then I saw Zaslav, Zaslav's comments. He said, he said, uh, we're going to have a real focus on franchises. We haven't had a Superman movie in 13 years, and we haven't had a Harry Potter <laughs> F- Potter movie in 15 years. And uh, this uh, Cartoon Network schedules uh, replied to this by saying, the last Superman movie, 2013's Man of Steel, was nine years ago. The last Harry Potter movie was a Fantastic Beast, which came out in April, so seven months ago. And the last Harry Potter movie that is part has Harry Potter in it came out 11 years ago. So... He's thrice wrong. He's he's wrong on every level, and that is unsettling he's, and hilarious. He's adjusting for quarantine math. Cool, <laughs> cool. Two years was really four years was really zero years. You don't know, DJ. Wow, this guy sucks. He sucks. Um, yeah. sorry, I don't know. Yeah. He, he seems like he sucks. Um, th- that's it from us. You don't like him, David Zaslav? No, he seems like a bad canceling. Batgirl and all that stuff. He's in all those cartoon network shows. I was being facetious. Oh, cool. No, I'm nobody. Being... Nobody likes that. <laughs> and he you probably don't like him? and he's probably the type of person that loves that. He's probably the type of lo- person that gets rock hard that nobody likes. <laughs> for sure. Cool. For what sure. a cool, cool world we built for ourselves. Um, listen, everybody. You know what is cool? The world girls, Roxy. What are the world girls up to? All the different things. Um, we are. Currently working very hard on our 2023 calendar. Oh, snap. New calendar shoot every year. We've got a sick theme for this year that we have not announced yet, but it's very cool. And um, we filmed an episode on shooting the calendar that will be coming out later this month. The actual calendar will be released in a couple of weeks. So that is where our efforts are. Uh, theworldgirls.com. Go over there and you can see everything we're doing. Go check it out. You can find me at DJ Talks Trash. You can follow the show everywhere that matters at Only Stupid Answers. But on Twitter. You got the dollars from stupid. And we will uh, see you all next week hopefully with a Black Panther review. Uh, Stay tuned.